when I learned about what are great businesses in the first time, I heard railways. They have the infrastructure in place, it doesn't bring anything to build a second railway right next to the old one. Once that railway is set up, the operation expense is very low and the cash flow is very high. Investors like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates love railways. Canadian National Railway has not really performed well. And since 2018, they have really underperformed the market. They pay a very small dividend, but historically they buy back a lot of their shares. So let's see, is this company currently a buy? All their financials are in Canadian dollars. Just you know, I'm just gonna say dollars. I'm not gonna say Canadian dollars all the time, but the valuation in the end will be in USD. I said railways are usually monopoly monopolies in their own region. Well then let's see where are they a monopoly? Mostly in Canada. For those of you who don't know how Canada is structured, uh, above this is nothing, so there's no reason to build a railway there. They're expanding south in the US, mainly through Detroit and Chicago, all the way down to New Orleans. Now, historically, they've had great revenue growth in this region, not really much growth over the last few years. They had some issues with strikes as well and wildfires. They had a few quarters where they were not performing as good, but overall we can see the trend line is up. Free cash flow has had a pretty big dip recently. While operating cash flow has kind of continued to grow, not by a lot, but it has grown. They have increased capital expenditures. Sometimes they have periods where they don't invest much at all. Over around 10 years, they've basically not grown any capital expenditures. They had a huge investment phase, kind of reduced their investments again, and now they're ranking back up. And this leads to this current dip in free cash flow. So then you just have to think what happens when investments normalize again. After the spikes, they usually normalize at lower levels. And then you get a huge margin of the revenue that goes into the operating cash flow. This is what always happens with railroads after these investment periods. Now, one issue I see is that, of course, this is a share buyback machine. They're buying back a huge amount of shares. Even now, when free cash flow is not that high, debt is exploding at this company because they don't have a cash flow right now. So they're using debt to buy back shares. They have a very low debt amount right now, especially for a stable business like a railroad company but it is something I would consider. In my calculation I'm gonna go with lower buybacks for now. Now this is all in USD they make around 4.3 in free cash flow per share. Now why growth rates of 12%? They're gonna get growth rates in revenue of around 4 to 5%. One they're gonna cut capital expenditures when they come out of this investment phase. Two revenue growth in a railroad always leads to higher free cash flow margin. Each dollar is more and more in free cash flow that you get. So the margin is gonna go up, the capex is gonna go down, and they're gonna buy back 3 to 4% in shares, depending on how much free cash they do, and if they're gonna leverage up a business. So I think 12% is realistic, slight slowdown after that. Obviously, they won't be cutting CapEx forever, so 10% after that, multiple of 18, which is kinda low for this company. Usually, because it's such a good company, they trade around 25, something like that, payout ratio of 45%, intrinsic value of $95 per share, currently a 1 out of 5, so it's not a 10% return, it's around 9%, but this is a fantastic company. It will always be priced as a fantastic company, even if it's currently performing a bit worse. If this goes back to the 25, then yes, again, you go and get 10% return here. I don't want to count on that, so I'm going with 18 for now. What if it goes a bit better? Higher revenue growth, higher buybacks, maybe they're gonna leverage up a business more. 20 multiple, yes, then you make above a 10% return. This company doesn't really have a big bear case, not like decline in revenue, but just like slower growth, slower multiple. In this case, it's not a fantastic investment again. I would count on this one. I think this is pretty realistic. Am I gonna buy it? No. I think you're going to get a 10% return from this company and it's a fantastic stock. This is one of those companies you can buy and just hold forever. It's not a devaluation where I want to add it. I might not ever be able to add it, but I have other fantastic companies I want to buy, which I can get at a way cheaper price. So what do you think? Write down below. Have a good day.